Hello and welcome to the first. <laughs> Wait, I am cutting you off. We just had this conversation and I was going to start the episode. I thought you were kidding. I thought you said I could start it. Okay, you can start. Hello and welcome <laughs> to the first episode of Who Wears the Pants podcast starring myself, Josh Herbert, and my lovely co-host. Abby Herbert. And that's the energy we're going to have for this podcast. So Abby, I'll let you take it from here. <laughs> I'm just lost for words right now. (laughs) I don't know where to go from here. Yeah, so this is our first episode. And if you are watching on YouTube, um, I'm sorry that there is pasta sauce on my sock I just saw. (laughs) No, there's not. (laughs) Yes, there is. There's some red pasta sauce. I think you wore this outfit yesterday. I did, but they don't need to know that. Well, now they do. Um, Yeah, so this is our first episode. And you guys know, you know, we have been on... The social media influence, is that the the influencer space? Well, we've been in the influencer space for about two years, but we've been on social media for- Forever, uh, for but yeah, no, the, like social media influence space for like two years. Yeah. And it took us two years to finally sit down and talk for 45 minutes once a week. Yeah, we're big podcast <laughs> fans. So uh, when we got the opportunity to, uh, opportunity? <laughs> opportunity, to, I can't even say that. Opportunity. Opportunity, how, how do you spell it? I, please go um i didn't have enough coffee o-p-p-u-r-t-u-n-i-t-y did i do it yep i don't know can we get a spell check on that <laughs> o-p-p-u-r-t okay i'm not gonna give any more into I, that I don't even know. but um when we got the opportunity <laughs> we got the opportunity we jumped on it so that being said um I don't know. Where do we want to kick off? Do we want to start from the beginning, Abby? Or I feel like that's the best way to start off the podcast. You know, I'm sure majority of you have either. either oh my god, <laughs> we are not going to be a long, <laughs> a long journey. We, we are not made talk. for this. Um, yeah, I think either you have seen our videos, you follow us, you know of us, but maybe you don't know like how we started, our history, our social security number, our background. So I feel like we should just start from the very beginning. Who wants to go first? I guess I could take it uh, from here. Actually, I don't know if that's a good, <laughs> I don't know if that's a good start. Um, so let's rewind. Uh, let's go back, way back to the beginning of um so lo and behold um i'm a magician i mean musician how many times are you gonna make that joke <laughs> i'm gonna keep making it um but i was shooting a music video for a song of mine um and the director of the video very good friend of mine um had a couple girls to be the girlfriend uh for my music video and i was like wow this girl's really pretty let's try to get her to be the fake girlfriend for the music video um so lo and behold it was abby and uh it was really weird uh the first day of the shoot um abby was upstairs and i heard her laugh and it was very odd (laughs) this annoying laugh that everyone hates on social (laughs) media (laughs) i don't know i can't do do it i don't know don't make me do it (laughs) i'll make you laugh later in the podcast but um that's for sure uh yeah it was like i recognized the laugh um it was really weird i didn't even see her yet um but anyway we just really hit it off we became wait 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 that (laughs) That jump that, well, that's how Josh took it. Oh. <laughs> and I feel like I have a different story because like I was showing up to work and I, my mom was with me and and I remember meeting you and I was like, oh, he's very handsome. But I know I say this all the time and you're not going to take offense to it. And it's our thing. But I was like, he's really sh- short. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it it was definitely a hinder in the beginning. <laughs> is that the right term? A hindrance. Hindrance. I, for. I don't know. We need an, exci- I can't even say it, encyclopedia. Um, well, that being said, I never saw the shortness as a problem. No, um, it wasn't a problem. But also, you have this story of like hearing my laugh and it love at first sight. And it was so romantic. And then I was like, I was just, just showing up for work. And then I left and then didn't speak to you for like, two years well like we were like friends on facebook and twitter but like didn't see each other again for like two years but like in josh's mind it was like this fairy tale (laughs) so anyway it was love at first sight Um, yeah no you're you're very handsome and but you know we were in different stages in our life Mm -hmm. i was (laughs) you were partying like a rock star yeah that's a whole 
episode in itself. Yeah, we can dive into that later. That's yeah, cool. so I think where it started was, you know, we, we met on set and it was great. Um, we stayed in contact. I feel like Twitter was really big yeah. during that time. Like just joking with each other. And well, you know, Josh was doing his jokes and I was like, what is this weirdo saying to me right I now? I send and fire jokes left <laughs> and right and uh, it worked. And I'll never forget you sent me that weird meme of like, Someone, you asked me to go get ice cream and then you like sent me a meme of like a dog on a motorcycle or something. Mm. And I just showed all my friends and I was like, what is this guy doing? I don't know if that was me. <laughs> it was totally you. Was well, someone had my phone maybe. Or no, no, you were trying to be sweet. Now, yeah. now knowing you, I understand your humor. And I think it's really funny. But yeah. at the time, not knowing you, I was like, this guy's weird. <laughs> maybe I thought you had known my humor and you, you must not have. No. But, uh, so yeah, so I would say what, it was about like two years later, Yeah. we finally rekindled. After and, like multiple attempts. Like yes. Like we were supposed to hang out and I had this really nice apartment and I scrubbed it clean because I knew Abby was coming. We were going to go out for dinner and 20 minutes before you were about to come, she texted me and she's like, hey, I'm actually not going to make it because I'm going to a party with my friends. <laughs> And uh, I was so hurt. That happened like three times. And it was a mixture of like, yes, I wanted to go party with my friends, but I was just like nervous to meet you. And I was like, because it was so much time has passed. And yeah. I was, I just was like, I'm comfortable just partying and hanging with my friends. And my mom actually met Josh during the music video and loved him. Like my mom had love at first sight for you. She was just like, he's such a good guy. He's so sweet. And I was going down... Like I said, we can get into this in another episode, but I was kind of going down the wrong path. Yeah, dark path. Uh, it was a very dark path of, um, you know, my life and what I was doing, trying to figure out like college, partying, schools, you know, blah, blah, blah. And my mom was always like, you know, remember Josh? And like, are you listening to his music? And she like followed up with everything. I was like, no, no. Even though I was still like talking to you and like setting up dates, but also canceling on you. And then finally... My mom was like, Abby, you need to give Josh a try. Even if you guys are just friends, like he seems like a good guy. She she just wanted me to surround myself with better people. And finally, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. So I got the courage because I was scared. I was nervous. And, you know, I didn't have a boyfriend or go on dates. I was comfortable with my friend group. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. And luckily, you did not hate me by that time because you should have for the amount of times I I was a bit Cancel salty, you? but, um, you know, I just really wanted to take you out on a date and it worked <laughs> out. Uh, I think we went for pizza. Or we something. did. Um, we did. And it literally, I, I'm, you guys will find out if you don't already know, I'm a very dramatic person and I like to exaggerate things. But when I say we just clicked immediately and I think I like, no joke, moved in like a month after our first date. Well, the after our first date to the pizza shop. Or yes. You, um, I got tickets for a penguin game, ice hockey game. It was like what, three days later, four it days was later? Like two or three days later. Yeah, it wasn't it was too much. Into the weekend. And uh, I, Abby, I asked Abby, I was like, hey, do you want to go with me? She said, yeah. And we went and we just really hit it off. But on the way home. Wait, I, I wait, sorry. I'm going to cut you off. Oh, this, uh, <laughs> this podcast, who wears the pants? Who wears the pants? <laughs> me. me no, I remember. So we went on the pizza date. And then I came over to your house like one time after that. And then it was like the following week we went to the Pens game. Cause like we went on like a, a one date in between there and we like really hit it off. We were like talking, FaceTiming. Do you have a journal of all this? I do. I still have my planner. Well, I have a planner and yeah. I wrote down every so time we, we went on there. a date. Um, and then actually, do you remember? I cut my hair off. I chopped it off after our second date. So it's like, he, yeah, it he like fell in love person. with this, like this beautiful <laughs> long hair and then I chopped my hair off and you still like me. You're still the same sweet, yes. uh, beautiful person. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I pretty much asked you out. No, not home. pretty much. You did ask me out. I asked out. on the way home. I was <laughs> be my girlfriend. She said, yeah. And uh, you moved in a couple days later, I think. Literally, yeah. It was, we always get confused. Was it the 19th or 20th of November? I think it was the 19th. Yes, but you... This is it. Are you going to tell them? Josh has a thing with numbers. Yeah. He wanted a, a superstitious. What is that? You just wanted an even number. An even number. Uh, he like so he numbers. was like, let's tell everyone I asked you out on the twentieth, even though it was the nineteenth. And then we were supposed to get married on. We were supposed to get married in twenty twenty. And I was like twenty nineteen. And good thing uh, we got married in two thousand nineteen. Yes, because our wedding would have been pushed 
but yeah, no, Josh has things with numbers. So we not anymore, though. not anymore, <laughs> but we did November 20th. And yeah, like I said, we, it was quick. I was enrolled in community. Well, actually I was enrolled to go to Ohio State University. That's right. I dropped out because that was just a bad decision on my part. Like I, I was only going there to party and be around the world crowd. Um, so I dropped out and then I enrolled in community college and then I dropped out of that, <laughs> of that. So I was just on this weird spiral but um, Josh got my life back together. Well, and too, at the time you were modeling and like yes. traveling for that too. And I just, I mean, I saw the potential in you and I knew you had it. And I think you just started really going into the modeling world and like and you're I, traveling like every week. Well, you got me back into the modeling world because when we first started dating, that's when I was still down my dark path of, you know, trying to still be in that party stage, but then you saw the potential that I had in modeling in my career. And when you finally were like, hey, you have this potential, you need to do this and focus on this. I, I did and things worked out. I got a job I, when I moved up here. So I'm from Ohio and I'm what, about an hour from where we are now in Pittsburgh. Yeah, you're about an hour outside. Um, so I was like, I need to find a job. Like I needed to make my own money. And so I got a job at the, the mall. I was working at American Eagle and Aerie mm -hmm. in the store, which I loved. And Absolutely. then um, I got my life together and then modeling started picking up again. And then I started modeling for Ari and, and doing all those things. So that's how that all worked out. So I think yeah. the moral of this story is for, for you, Josh, for you, you never give up. <laughs> you never gave up. Yeah. Um, I mean, one of my favorite quotes that I made up myself, uh, <laughs> well, you can make up your own quote. You, yeah. I'm going to get this on a shirt, but, okay. um, if you never give up success is your only destiny. Wait, wait, oh my God. Wait. You're making me nervous. If you never give up, success is your only destination. If you never give up. Great. That's a good one. I mean, it's true. If and I think up. for me, what would be the, the story for the listeners hearing my, my side? Uh, <laughs> uh, don't hang around the wrong crowd of people and get out of your comfort zone. And find your Prince Charming. Find your Prince Charming. <laughs> That was good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. So that takes us into how we met and our little story. Mm -hmm. And um, we started dating. And then immediately I was like, where's my ring? Well, <laughs> at, and, you know, this can kind of uh, go into that uh, time of our lives. Like at that moment when we were dating, currently my job was um, my family does like home building. So I was kind of like working for them whilst still pursuing a music career. Um, I had uh you know some albums out and i was working towards hopefully going on tour and then you got time. this crazy once in a lifetime opportunity I got a crazy once in a lifetime opportunity i opened for the dixie chicks now known as the chicks um and i played 20 dates with them uh, and that was i think why we probably moved so quickly because yeah. we were dating november and then you went on tour in what 2016 no like month wise june oh, uh june yeah so November, December, January, like we were like in that honeymoon phase and then like full blown into like this crazy world of tour life where Josh didn't know anything. I didn't know anything. Yeah, I, got, I was playing like venues for like two people. And, <laughs> maybe like and 20 it was all family. People and it was mainly like family there uh, and friends and then thrown into playing huge like pavilion. Wait, should we plug arenas. your music real quick? I feel like a lot of people actually don't know that you are a musician. 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 Stop. <laughs> I, I knew that. No, it no there. more jokes, but like yeah. a lot of people don't know that. Yeah, a lot of people don't know I do music and that's been- Where uh, can they find you? Um, yeah, so if you go uh, anywhere you listen to stream music, uh, Spotify, YouTube. Just Basically where you found this podcast. Where you found the podcast. <laughs> um, search Josh Herbert. I got some absolute hits out there that are waiting to be discovered. And <laughs> no, they're great. Uh, <laughs> they are really Thank good. You. I appreciate that. Abby. You don't have to be nice. Okay. <laughs> no, just kidding. They are good. So wait, I, I lost track um, where so we are. Oh, you on at? tour yeah, on tour. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, tour kind of, uh, finalized and wait, you're kind of skipping over the the part where you played Madison Square Garden, which well, was crazy. I didn't want to kind of humble <laughs> to your, over to here. Your own I really appreciate that. I mean, gosh, it really boosted my morale. I got but you. But yeah, I, I played Madison Square Garden, had a couple panic panic attacks on stage there. That yeah, was, and it was kind of funny. It's not funny, but like, obviously Josh was an up and coming artist and no one besides like family and friends really knew the lyrics to his songs. So when he was performing Madison Square Garden, I was like, oh my God, he's not saying the right words. Like he, it, it was gibberish at one point, but like 
obviously no one could tell besides I was just trying not to pass out. <laughs> besides us and it was really funny we got to find videos and post it because like my favorite memory of Josh is wearing his tight tight pants and his yeah. high-heeled boots and your tight black t-shirt and like I mean I'm still kind of there I don't my jeans got a little bit looser though <laughs> but like knowing you as a person like I obviously knew how nervous you were and how much anxiety you have and that's a whole episode in itself. Yeah. Um, we'll do a deep dive. Because we, we did a little bit on YouTube, but if you guys don't know, Josh, if you want to, I don't want to speak for you, but like oh, has, please, <laughs> has panic disorder, anxiety in like that tour. Performing in front of people is like yeah, your I mean, biggest fear. Yeah, we can dive into it on another episode, but when you have panic disorder or anxiety, the last thing you want to do is put yourself in a vulnerable situation or in front of people uh, doing something where everybody's eyes are kind of on you. So... Um, but it tends to be the people who do battle with this do things. Like you hear that a lot, a lot of artists have it, yeah. a lot of musicians, but like you would never know what you went through on stage, but I obviously yeah. knew you. So like seeing you standing there and like doing the guitar and he was like, he'd go from one song and just be like, all right, next song is this. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I, was like, my, I had like five songs, a 20 minute set and I was just trying to get off there in like 15 minutes. Oh, I think your first set, you you were done in like 12 minutes. Oh, I and pieced they, the last song because I was about to do yeah, you did. Oh, that's yeah. right. You didn't do the last song. Yeah. Um, but you know, what an amazing opportunity and how yeah. crazy that was. And that just made our relationship even stronger. Yep. And I mean, it was hard times, good times. Um, a lot of traveling. My dad bought an RV <laughs> and he was our tour bus driver. Was, and I went on in the RV. We drove RV. across country. Um, so that was like a crazy part in our life. And so we were on such a high. And then we came home and we're like, oh, we got to like go back to work. Bills to pay. We had rent. <laughs> and um, do normal things. Do normal things. And then I, I, after that, I really wanted to pursue the music. So I had an opportunity to go out to LA mm -hmm. uh, shortly after. Um, and I think at the we time- We drove. Yeah, we drove. <laughs> um, we needed a car out there. That's no, no, no. Uh, once again, get into this in another episode, yeah. but Josh has a, a phobia of, of flying. Of airplanes, so. so that just shows how much I love him that I drove to LA, Vancouver twice, three times. Twice. I don't know. I lost track, but we're no, getting but, there. Uh, yeah. So we got out to uh, LA and we were in Burbank. Yeah. Um, this is like 2017. Yeah. You were doing music. I was doing modeling. Yeah. We we were trying. We were literally living off of credit cards. Yeah, and watching our cash burn. Literally no money in our pockets. Came home. Actually, crazy story. Like we were so broke. Josh had to what was it um oh my gosh i'm blanking oh uh, what we're like not was it food stamps oh um yeah yeah no josh stamps. literally got on food stamps and i, I was i was lucky enough to still be on my parents insurance if not i would have been in the same situation yeah. and we were just like broke barely hanging on <laughs> in the townhouse we had at yeah the time, honestly. yeah um I was like, oh, we're gonna have, I'm gonna have to move back into my parents' basement. No, <laughs> literally at one point I was like, Josh, we need to call your parents. Um, and I'm so glad they did this. They were like, you you guys are okay. You'll yeah, figure it out. I was like, figure it out. So. Um, and we made it through. We we saved up and that's kind of like where our life was, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. Uh, my modeling career was picking up. So I you was traveling a lot. Traveling and a lot. And, you know, we would see each other I was gone at least three times a week yeah. and, you know, see each other on the weekends. Josh was doing odd end jobs. I did uh, Uber. I did Uber. I worked at a salvage shop, like yep. uh, furniture and salvage. You were a stuff. car salesman for like a week. I tried car sales. <laughs> um, and then I worked at a juice shop, juice shop. Like making like fresh pressed juices. Um, so we, we went from, like I said, a very high, high of like living on top of the world to like very low and, you know, your normal trying to make it and getting by but yeah. we had each other through the whole oh, thing oh no it, think, it was great and you know like i said we made it work we yeah. lived to how we needed to live and then covid happened the the good old covid world shut down and um i'll never forget like sitting on the couch watching the news being like what is happening in the world um unfortunately we you know I couldn't travel anymore. The modeling industry shut down. Josh ended up losing his job. They they let him go. And we were like, oh crap, because we just bought a brand new truck. Do you remember that? A yeah. month before COVID. It was like my first real job I had. I got like salary, everything, yeah. food benefits. Yeah, um, we were like, what? We still. Like, yeah, I was like, 
Oh, so. sorry. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Can we put that on silent? I know we're good. Um, um, yeah. So, uh, my first big boy job, you know, benefits the whole thing, and bought a brand new truck. Yeah, we we financed it. We we actually had to put it in my name. Yeah, remember because your have, your credit, credit was, was just <laughs> his credit was so bad from the <laughs> from the L A oh. trip. Yeah. Literally, it was still from that, that L.A. Me. trip crushed us. Um, so luckily, I had some credit. We put it on the, the card. And, uh, you know, we were the ones during COVID. You know, we, unemployment, um, you know, extended the payments. And we were like, what the heck are we going to do? We, ha- we had to, like, start making some type of money. And, you know, I... I think we were selling stuff. Oh, we like, sold everything. Like you like sold, we were, Remember your Beanie Babies? You went through the... You yeah, sold them I all know, off? I, I miss them. <laughs> I really miss them. Like... But, um, yeah, we were just trying to uh, sell off anything we could. And uh, we were actually going to, like, Goodwills all around Pittsburgh um, and trying to flip clothing for a while oh yeah um we were selling everything but uh <laughs> speaking of selling we have a quick word for you from our sponsor now a word from our sponsor better help when we face challenges in life we often times run from those challenges instead of facing it head on but when you learn those tools and techniques to solve those challenges there's no better feeling in the world a therapist is a great resource if you're looking to become a better problem solver and to accomplish those goals no matter how big or small Josh has been going to therapy for the past seven years. So Josh, why don't you take it from here? The reason I decided to try therapy, I had some opportunities come up and I needed to fly. But one big problem, I have an extreme phobia of flying. My therapist helped me overcome these obstacles with professional advice and problem solving techniques to get over my fears and anxiety. Therapy has made me a more confident person and now I'm able to excel in all aspects of my life. If you're thinking about giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It can be challenging taking that first step, but with BetterHelp, it's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. You will get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey, and you can switch therapists at any time. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash Herberts to get 10% off your first month. That is better H-E-L-P slash Herberts. Now let's get back to the program. So yeah, we were really struggling and trying to figure out like, what do we do now? Um, We didn't obviously didn't want to collect unemployment for too long. So I always wanted to be a Vine star. I was Vine's probably number one user. I, you know, I can quote probably every Vine, you know, viral Vine out there. So I had the TikTok app. I tried to use it pre-pandemic and didn't really get it or understand it. But, um, you know, the younger girls, I remember being at a fashion show. It was a week before everything shut down. And these, the young models, the younger ones were trying to teach me how to use this app. And I was like, I don't understand it. I don't get it. But they're like, you have to use it. And I remember the one model had 14,000 followers. And I was like, how? That is crazy. That's amazing. Um, And she kind of showed me how to use it. So I was understanding. And then that next day, I made a TikTok of how we met. And it was like videos from our wedding Mm -hmm. and from the music video. And I remember waking up the next day and I screamed. I was like, Josh, this video has 600,000 views. I do remember that. 600,000 views. Crazy. Never in my life have I experienced anything like that. What a and, rush. And, I mean, it was. And then, you know, because I didn't understand, an hour later I checked. I was like, this has 2 million views. And it just kept growing and growing. And then the followers. I had 15,000 followers after posting that one video. Yeah. I remember I'm, it was just like unreal. a tidal wave. Unreal. Insane. And I think I might have had like 8,000 on Instagram and that was like having that Instagram account since like I was in sixth grade. Yeah. So like it took a long time to get to 8K and it never got any further. But did I not from the beginning, yeah. I always said to Abby, I was like always like looked at her Instagram. I'm like, one day you're gonna have like a million followers. Like, Josh I, always pushed it. Yeah, I was like, I, how do you only have like 8,000 followers? Like I, I was like, I one day I see it, you're gonna have a million. And, and, and shout out to my, my, old, my old roommate, model roommate, Madeline. She had over 100, 
thousand followers. And I remember sitting in our room together and I was like, how did you do it? Like, that's gotta be so cool. And she's like, girl, like you can do it. I was like, there's no way. I'll never in my life have a hundred thousand people care about me or care what I post or say. Um, and I'll never forget that. And she's, she was amazing. But yeah, anyway, it, we got 15,000 immediately. And then I tried to post another video of like me just being like modeling and posing <laughs> flopped, did terrible. And I was like, okay, this, let me try posting Josh one more time. So I like surprised Josh in a dress. Like I put on a dress and I surprised him and he did something super silly. It had 3 million views in an hour. And I was like, what the heck just happened? So once again, we had like 100,000 followers in the first week. The audience wanted the talent. <laughs> and it was, and I realized who my talent was quickly. I realized it's not me. I mean, you know, no, it wasn't me. No, I tried. It's you're not like, me. <laughs> you're like the producer, the director. I was the producer, the director, coming up with the the scripts, if it was scripted, coming up with the the pranks and the ideas. But Josh obviously is the talent. He's so good at it and is amazing. But I will be honest, like, I was like seeing Abby was like so pumped. This was like really growing and stuff. But here's me. I just got canned from a job. <laughs> I am 30, 30 years, years old. Years old. 30, um, you just turned 30 in that uh, yeah. April. Just turned 30. I'm like, what am I doing with my life? I'm like still trying to do music, still not sure. He and was so against TikTok. I was only against it because through my whole like short lived music career that I'm still doing music by the way, but <laughs> um, I was on like Facebook. I was on this app called Viddy. It was before Vine. Like, don't OG knock app. yourself though. You have like two hundred thousand on Facebook. That was that's yeah, pretty big. I like you, I was doing covers. Like I was really pushing it. <laughs> Justin Bieber covers. I was doing, yeah, I was doing mad. One that Direction should be a whole covers. episode. Yeah, uh, <laughs> reacting to those. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they're hidden on my YouTube page, by the way. But um, yeah, I was doing like One Direction covers. Like any popular song that was out, I was covering it like daily. And just really growing it. I mean, it worked and it was growing like super rapidly. Um, but I was like over, I was just so like, you know, dr drawn out with that. But I was just like, I'm done To give with, you like, the, I think this is the right benefit term, of the benefit of the doubt. Was that right? I, it. Um, I was crazy annoying in the beginning. Yeah, I mean, you were, well, you were just excited. This I was, was like, so hyped. You, I all was your being, dreams were coming true. <laughs> but I was being so creative. Yeah. I always like, I loved the multimedia classes in school. I loved editing videos. I loved creating. And like, I think that's why I enjoyed modeling so much because I was creating art and images, but I was never on the creative side. I was like the mannequin, yeah. the hanger. Now I was in full control of the content I was putting out there. And once again, I had 24 hours in the day to sit and scroll this app and find the trends and you know obviously we were on the app at the right time yeah. everyone was on it it was in the beginning of 2020 um i don't know if this is a correct term to say but i feel like we're one of the og couple creators on the app during that time at least during 2020 i think that's a comfortable statement abby yeah i, I don't want to humble brag yeah um, but we we were in that that group of the you know in that beginning stages of the pranks the reactions but where and, we were like doing something different was I kind of have like a sassy, sassy that's where I the guess, sass came, came from um, yeah sarcastic is what I would we say we weren't but. doing the lovey-dovey content where I did, said something to Josh and he picked me up swung like would swing me around and kiss me on the forehead he was like leave me alone shut up like <laughs> not to that <laughs> not extent, to that extent but, but it was funny more realistic you know day-to-day -day life thing that I think people could relate to and I think at the end of the day that's why people gravitated what was, was the one I did I was like Josh I'm cold Josh I'm cold and you're like what are you telling me for I was like, There's basket <laughs> blankets. like and like that one went stupid viral but I think people were like yeah my husband does that or my partner does that yeah. and they were only seeing things on the internet that was like has like partners like go getting them a blanket yeah. and wrapping them and being like super lovey-dovey and that's where we tried to be different because that's Plus, i mean my acting talent <laughs> on these is just like well that's where we got terrible. into some trouble in the beginning because then people took it and were like oh he's really mean and i was like no 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 like this is this is humor this is this is a joke it's a like show it's all puff and smoke smoke and mirrors <laughs> uh Wait, I've never heard that term before. Then <laughs> smoking mirrors. You know? Never heard that. Okay, well, that I'm just a shows. magician. So. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's where it started in the beginning. In that's our dog barking. I, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that. 
Okay, Nate, keep working. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Nate, quiet down up there. <laughs> we'll, we'll be right back. I'm going to go let Nate out. Friend, Nathan out. Word, I will be right back. And this is what happens when you do a podcast in your house, in your basement. <laughs> Already, um, we are back. Sorry about that little break. Uh, once again, we are doing this in our basement, which is really amazing, convenient, but you know, Look at this site life. we built. We got, <laughs> we've got vegetation, we've got lights. Yeah, so if you're listening to this, make sure you are going to our YouTube channel and watching this so you can see how amazing the set looks right now. Yeah. But um, back to TikTok and how we got started. So we blew up very quickly um, and we hit 1 million followers the first month and our lives literally forever changed from that moment. And I'll be honest, uh, modeling industry, modeling world, I knew of influencers and I knew they, you know, they made money from the internet and they made careers, but I didn't understand like the extent of it and like what they actually you didn't think it was actual work? No, I didn't understand. I was like, what are they doing? Like I'm showing up to set nine hours a day and they're making money by posting a little video. And guys, when I tell you like influencers and people on social media, the amount of work and time it takes, it's, it is a full-time job and career. And like I said, it's new for a lot of people. Um, some of our family members took a while for them to understand what we do. Sometimes it's still confusing. Uh, and I think that we really should one episode sit down and like literally pull down all the layers of content creation and like answer any questions because yeah, really a lot of people still ask us like what do we do for a living yeah. and it's confusing and it's not easy to understand this new lifestyle everything's going digital i heard meta like I, i'm the metaverse the, the metaverse. you know i'm hearing things in 10 20 years is going to be all digital so it's just a crazy transition from pandemic and where we are now and our lives have changed and I know everyone's life has changed but I think you know we took a bad thing of losing our jobs being completely broke and turned it into funny TikToks and yeah. and we really when trying to create our content want to just make people laugh yes we know some of the videos are cringy and and corny I don't but think they're cringy. oh well thank you but <laughs> we, we try our best to just you know hit the audience that just needs a good laugh and uh, then we went to we went from asking I went, I went from asking my husband for a baby to then, you know, we were so blessed to get pregnant. Now we have poot, little, little poot, poot, little poot pooter. Soon. And l so much has changed in two years. And we are so grateful for where we are now and to have this lifestyle and to be able to work from home, mm -hmm. work together and still be able to be with Poppy and have her with us at all times and just create content talk to people, reach out to people. You know, I still read my DMs daily yeah. and um, I know you do as well. Yeah, we try to get back to everybody, but it's like, it's crazy because as TikTok was like starting to take off, like we were both like, what do we do? Like we were kind of reaching out to brands and some brands were reaching out to us and like didn't really understand the world. So I literally went on Google and I typed in TikTok management. management. <laughs> like, and there was like the very first one that popped up um, is who we're with now. Yeah. Um, so it was pretty crazy. And I just like e cold, e or I think I DM'd uh, one of the people on there and was just like, hey, my wife and I are on this app TikTok and we're looking for a TikTok management or something <laughs> in this world. I was like, yeah, I we knew were nothing clueless. about it. I kind of knew something with yeah. modeling, with having an agent and stuff. But like this whole world is just so wild. And I just encourage everyone. You know, I have a lot of people that are like, you know, I want to get into modeling. How did you get into modeling? And obviously, did you hear that? <laughs> obviously. obviously, modeling is an amazing career and I enjoy every second of it. But I truly encourage people to post videos, to be active on social media. I, I, I prefer that career and this lifestyle over the modeling. You have control of your content. You can be yourself, be who you are. And, you know, how many people have blown up from just posting one silly video on TikTok or maybe they were, you know, unsure, like, should I post this? Should I not worried about what other people would think? Cause that's number one thing. If I was worried about what people from my past would think of these videos, we would not be where we are today because I would not have posted them. I was like, yeah. you know what? I think this is great. Same as you, you had people in your life in the beginning that were texting you, sending your videos, sending you silly jokes and like- Yeah, I was getting made fun of. <laughs> like I don't want, you were basically, you kind of were getting bullied. Yeah. <laughs> but like, 
you know, if you let that get to you, we wouldn't, you would not be here today and where you are. So, yeah. and I'm very grateful. I get to work with not only my best friend, but my <laughs> wife yeah. all day long. We have a blast. We really do. <laughs> yes. I don't know how we-, we have a blast. No, it's, it's good. We, it took us a while to get there, yeah. which well, I think the biggest thing, thing for us um, at the beginning, like we were just getting overwhelmed because you know people think like, oh, influencers, they don't do anything. Like I've worked harder now than I ever worked at any job I've ever had, and, and we you've had just, a lot of jobs. I've had a ton of jobs <laughs> in all fields, restaurants, you name it, and we were getting flooded with all this stuff, and we had no schedule. We yeah. were just like what's going on what's going on so i think once we figured out a schedule with our lives and yeah. our work and everything like that like everything started clicking we were able to get things done um and it really started taking off from there yeah and and i think with this podcast we just want to be open honest and real uh you know we try to do that on tiktok but the trends you know kind of are funny and silly now so we're it's going of, behind the screens yeah we are yeah. behind the screens we want to open up we are going to be interviewing people you know we can bring my brother chris on yeah. <laughs> we can bring nice. my cousin noah, noah. <laughs> i mean if you guys don't just disclaimer there we're not relatives that was a joke on tiktok yeah. but people if still, you're here now you know the truth now you know the truth because we are being on. truthful on this podcast and you know Which we got to figure out where are they going to sit are they going to sit here or <laughs> we'll figure that out. i don't know do you think they'll come to pittsburgh <laughs> i think honestly i think you guys not only our viewers but i think abby's going to sit we can't talk today. No. Um, I think Abby's going to be surprised of who we actually can bring on this podcast. I think we're going to be flying a lot of people into Pittsburgh. And I would like to know, like, who do you guys want to see on the podcast? Now that we have the show on YouTube, you guys can comment and let us know things you want to see, people you want to see. And we will be doing segments on this podcast. So I love pop culture. My number one thing is watching reality TV, keeping up with the TikTok drama, even though I'm like literally 26 years. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm literally 26 years old with a child and I'm like, <gasps> who's Addison Ray's mom dating? Like who, who's, what's going on? So like, I'm totally into that. And you and try to fill me in and I don't, <laughs> I honestly don't really go on TikTok much or no. any of these apps and she fills me in and I'm like, what, who, who are we talking about? So I think I'm starting to, to know you're more get, people You're in this, getting there. So world. we will be doing things where like I open up Twitter, read some trending stories that Josh is clueless, clueless about and get your your ideas and opinions on everything. And like I said, bringing guests on, getting candid about our mental health. And, you know, that was a big thing in our relationship, Josh having anxiety and me having experience with no anxiety and then trying to navigate a relationship and understanding was a whole struggle in itself. Yeah. And, you know, getting candid about social media and the bad sides of it, the good sides. And we just wanted to start this first episode, you know, explaining ourselves and... Someone just flushed the toilet. <laughs> this is what happens when you have a podcast in your basement. Hey, totally fine. <laughs> but yeah, we wanted to just start this episode a little bit about us. I know we threw so much information at you, yeah. like that was a lot. So if there's anything you guys want us to go more into detail? I was yeah, going like, to say elaborate. Was that the right word? Elaborate, yeah. But like if there's <laughs> something specific you want us to talk I about. I can't say that word. On, say <laughs> Spe specific. Specific. Also, fun yeah. fact about me, I have had a speech impediment. Kinda still do. Still kind of do when, it, when I talk really fast. So it's most likely going to come out in one of these episodes. Um, I was in speech therapy for what, three to four years yeah. when I was little. I actually stopped talking because no one could understand me. So... If it comes out. And now she doesn't stop. And no, and I still don't stop talking. But when I talk really fast, it comes out. So I'm I'm sorry if you have to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing no, wrong with the speech wrong impediment. With um, but yeah, we hope we can be a beacon of light uh, in your day and uh, bring you some joy and prosperity. And uh, with this all vegetation and just <laughs> these nice vibes. And uh, hopefully we can uh, bring you some humor as well. So was... Was that it? Did we officially do our first episode? I think we're officially done with episode one of Who, Who Wears, Wears the, the Pants? Pants. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next time. And I promise next time if you're watching, I will not have dirty socks on. <laughs> You'll probably be wearing the same thing. Most likely. We'll see you next Wednesday. See you next Wednesday. Goodbye.